Hey guys, what's up? It's Kayden again. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Now, another episode of Supernatural Season 13 has aired. Um, hopefully you guys have watched it. I've just watched it. Made my notes. So let's talk about it. Firstly, <laughs> the first major thing that happens is the new bad guy, who's the fourth prince of hell, loyal to Lucifer, walks in to Hell's throne room. Now, the first thing I noticed was the fact that the man was wearing all white. The all white ensemble does not look good on anyone at any time, it's completely unnecessary. First of all, down in Hell, everyone else is wearing black suits. There's a reason, because I'm pretty sure the soot from Hell would get on those white clothes. All I'm saying. However, he does have a very good beard, so he had that going for him. He is one of the most cliche people I have probably met on Supernatural, and that's saying something. <clears throat> There's a new sheriff in town. Yes, we get it, but you're not Clint Eastwood. Chill the hell out. <laughs> get it? Chill hell. Anyway, so yeah, so he's the new villain of the series, but he seems to, obviously he's waiting for Lucifer because he's his loyal follower, and then we find out he's got a tra tragic scar backstory, which then leads on to the conversation about the new beastie of the Supernatural fandom which is going to be interesting. You see one of the hands of the Beasties later in the episode, but it's just sort of like, I expected more like Hellhound CGI type thing going on rather than looking like a human again, because that's just, we need something that doesn't look like a human. This is not Doctor Who, people. All of the bad guys cannot be human-esque, okay? No, we need different Beasties. We need like a when, no, because when do guys look like humans? But as I said, Hellhound and CGI is what we need. I'm hoping the faces and the bodies look a bit more disfigured to be creepy because apparently, if Lucifer fears them, we are screwed, okay? But he is absolutely bloody mental, this new guy. I mean, you find, like, when he's pretending to be the prophet, he's like so obsessed with trying to get these creatures to Earth or trying to get these creatures to just come back and rule. But if Lucifer's scared of them, what makes you think you can control them? You're not that great, mate. And it, considering you're absolutely mental, you're probably gonna die, they'll eat you alive. That's the sort of thing they do. We don't know yet. Um, however, the new guy does seem pretty powerful and yet he can't manage to open the gate to hell himself, but he can kill a gazillion demons at once. I know it was something like 10, but that's not the point. It was pretty cool. And then suddenly we go back to, Lu we flash to Lucifer and Mary who are still in this alternate universe. And yeah, and as, as you guys know, I don't like Mary very much. And she was just being so pathetic. So I just keep moving Mary, come on. I, I want Lucifer to survive and Mary to die because I mean, obviously Dina Reddy, Sam and Dina Reddy think she's dead and she's completely useless. As was seen when there was like all these angels and then against this hunter guy, um, when the hunter guy attacked her, all she did was like grapple and she got thrown to the floor. It's like, Mary, I thought you were supposed to be the best hunter. What are you doing? Matt, either like up your game or just like go away. You're useless. But Lucifer seems to really, really think he needs her. And then he goes, Why would I kill you? Because she's useless. Okay, I don't see how she can possibly help you. Okay, this has not been explained to any of us in this episode. It was not explained last episode, but he seems to think he needs her, which to me makes me think Lucifer has completely lost it and doesn't understand the difference between usefulness and uselessness. Is uselessness is now a word? It's very difficult to say though. He was talking about, uh, he's saying he needs her to exchange her for Jack. Well, when has the ev when has the exchange of loved ones? with the Winchesters, or with anyone in any TV series or film, ever actually work. They always say, oh, I'll exchange this person for this person. They make a deal, they sort out a meeting point, or it's like this person for this amount of money. I mean, it never works. People always die. And then the things that are trying to be exchanged, or the people who are trying to be exchanged, it just doesn't work. So hopefully, Mary's the person who dies in this instant. But, and sort of like, you sort of see a softer side to Lucifer when she's like, I can't see, I can't imagine you wanting to raise a child and he stares off into the distance and he's like, you have no idea. And I'm like, I, why have I got the feels for the devil? This is ridiculous. But I love him so much. He is amazing. And it's Mark Pellegrino. How can you not love him? And I'm pretty sure I said that in my other um, video, but still, how can you not love him? And now like, I bet you, I bet you, 
they're gonna end up together. They're either gonna kiss or they're gonna properly end up together. But if that happens, I will actually like have a meltdown because no, that's not right. Lucifer and Mary are not a good match. Ma Mary was just, she's not a match for anyone but John Winchester. But John Winchester's busy being Negan on The Walking Dead, okay? He is no longer here. So Mary, just go crawl in a hole and just like leave everyone alone. Jack is such a cutie patootie. I love him. He is amazing. He reminds me a bit of Castiel actually, which might be because he's like, oh, Castiel's my father, blah, blah, blah. Well, he knows Lucifer's his father, but he's like, Castiel's his father figure, even though Cass is still dead. Which I, I actually expected to see like flashbacks to Cass. I'm like, where is he? Where are you? What are you doing? Because I'm pretty sure Misha um, hinted the fact that Cass isn't dead. And yet, to me, he seems pretty dead. Maybe he was trying to trick us. Maybe he's trying to get our hopes up and then crush us from the inside because that seems to be what he's doing. Obviously, they get to this motel because they've been driving for so long. Sam's worried about Dean. Dean's hallucinating sheep on the road, apparently. And um, you could sort of see Dean's cracks break a little bit, like his walls come down a little bit when Jack's watching these cartoons. Because I'm assuming he thought it was like what Cass did and started watching porn in front of them, which was absolutely hilarious in that episode. But he was just watching Scooby-Doo and cartoons and you could sort of see Dean waver to like let him watch it and then he goes, no, I'm like, for God's sake, Dean, what are you doing? Let the poor guy watch Scooby-Doo. Goes, read a book, obviously we all know it's the Bible that he's thrown at him. And then um, they all sit down and talk and um, Jack's like, oh, God's in here too. Is he famous or something? And Sam's little smile, the fact that he's stifling a laugh and like a proper smile, it melted my heart. I was like, oh Sam, for God's sake, I'm getting, I'm getting feels all over the place, people. I mean, if you didn't like love that look on Sam's face, I mean, you're dead inside. And I thought I was dead inside. But he's like, he lo he, I, I, I genuinely think he loves Jack so much. I mean, Sod, Castiel being the father figure and Lucifer being his father, Sam is now his father. I am determined that is canon. Although he's like, yeah, he's like adopted him. And poor Dean. Obviously Dean thinks he's the problem. And then obviously we've got Jack's traumatic flashbacks from when he was in his mother's womb. And then when Lucifer tried to contact him while he was in his mother's womb. So he's got good memories of his mom, but he's all getting traumatic, so obviously she's dead. And then there's all these, one, all these when Lucifer is trying to contact him, so he's got that, which is traumatic. It's like, you are three days and like, what, 17 hours old, he said or something? He calculated it when he was trying to have a bit, which was hilarious. But it's like, well, well you, you can't have traumatic pleasure. It's like the traumatic scar story. Stop with the trauma, people. Okay, people can just be evil or good without having trauma, okay? It happens. Um, and then, obviously, when the prophet, Donatello, I do believe his name is, um, knocked on the door and was outside the door. He didn't actually knock on the door. He kind of got dragged and flung to the floor as an entrance. I mean, there are better ways to enter a room, I'm sure, but there are probably worse ways as well. But he was like, is God with you? I'm like, oh my gosh. That is how close Sam and Dean are to God. Is God with you? As though he's popped around for a bloody cup of tea. No, God is not with them because Chuck abandons his family and he's just gone to like swan off to bloody like Hawaii with his sister or something. I mean, seriously. No, God is not with them. You idiot. You should know that. The prophet came because of Jack's immense power, which means I don't think we've even scratched the surface with this kid. This guy is strong. This guy has powers beyond our imagining, and which also means that he's going to lose them at some point in the series, because that tends to be what happens with really powerful people. As I said, Dean doesn't like this kid. He, I think he's warming to him very, very slowly, but I think he's warming to him. But he doesn't like him. And I think he just needs one really shocking moment for him to realise that Jack's actually not that bad. I mean, we could all be wrong. Jack could end up killing everybody and then he's the new devil or whatever. Oh god, that would be weird. Kills Lucifer, becomes the new devil. Like, actually becomes Satan. God, that would be... That would be strange. But so far, Jack's too much of a cute cutie to even think about doing that. And then that would break Sam's heart. And then that would make me cry. And then we don't need that in life. We just don't. But, um... I think Dean just needs a really, really like big shock to the system to get him to like trust Jack. Actually, he doesn't even have to trust him. He just has to sort of lay off a little bit. And then obviously they're trying to protect protect Jack because obviously because Sam was like, well, if his power can reach that far out to get the prophet here, then the angels are still out there. People are listening. They're going to be hunted. So they get him the the protection tattoo to match theirs, and then this sigil on his chest, which I do believe is to stop angels coming near him. And um, obviously, as soon as they came into the tattoo part, I was like, no, nah, this isn't going to work. It's not. He heals too quickly. I mean, I can't remember what, show, what other thing it happened in. But, like, any time a, a person who can heal, like a vampire, for example, 
gets a tattoo, it'll just disappear because they've healed. That's the whole point, a tattoo is an open wound. So of course they're not going to work. Think it through, boys. I mean, I thought you were supposed to be clever. And I predict that this season is going to be full of Jack and Sam heart to heart. I mean, when Jack ran away and Sam went after him. I mean, it was cute, it was a cute moment, but I, re I have a feeling we have plenty of more cute heart to heart moments to come. But I'm also hashtag Team Dean's bodyguard because sat, they, they just get that written on t-shirts and just wear it and Dean would get really frustrated and be hilarious. But um, no, because Sam and Jack are like, oh, we've got to protect him. And um, even though he's like, oh, so he wants to kill you, he doesn't hate, hate you. Sam's like, oh, Dean doesn't hate you. No, no, I'm pretty sure he does at this point. He's like, and then Jack's like, what does he have to fear from me? He's like, oh, well, we're going to have to protect him. Hashtag Team's bodyguard. Team Dean's bodyguard. It'll be great. Um, and then it's always like, oh, I'm not worth all this. You are nearly four days old. You cannot have low self-esteem, okay? That is ridiculous. You don't know what you're worth. You don't know what you can do. All you're going to know is these people are protecting you and just take it, okay? And then we obviously flash back to Lucifer and Mary. I'm glad we didn't have a, a lot of them. Although I do love Lucifer, I'd like more of Lucifer, I just can't stand her. But how, how, in that dusty wasteland, is her t-shirt so white still? It, like, her face is mucky, her arms are mucky, her jeans are mucky. Why is her open shirt, like, she's got a jacket on so it's open, why is that still so white? It makes no sense. That is a bad continuity error. As always, Sam finds time for a pep talk. As I said, more heart to hearts, but now it's like pep talk. And it's just, it's just great. Sam, Sam has done, in two episodes, Sam has done two to three pep talk slash heart to hearts. So yes, yeah, so this season is going to be full of them. So if you don't like Sam Winchester, which if you don't what, you're not gonna like this season, I don't think, because it is a lot of Sam being all protective and caring and um, moose motherly, as it were. And obviously when they're fighting all these angels who have come to collect Jack, and this is when the um, the fourth prince of hell comes to collect Jack, Dean's angel blade throw was absolutely brilliant. That was beyond fantastic. Although I thought when the prophet was pressed up against um, the wall that he was going to kill him and then Dean was going to go off the rails going, this is all Jack's fault. I was like, oh my god, here we go, drama. But then, no, that angel blade throw was absolutely amazing. You go, Jensen Ackles. You go, Dean. I mean, that was a good aim. And then when they were talking about, um, and when they got there, Jack's obviously trying to open this gate of hell with the fourth prince going, open it, open it. This is when we find out he's absolutely doolally and crazy. And um, then he's like, our oh, creature's too wicked for the pit to hold. Well, they're holding them now, so they're obviously not too wicked for the pit to hold because you have to get Jack to open it to get them out. So it's holding them. That's literally what that means. You're an idiot. Then it's an alternate universe um, where Lucifer and Mary are, and then he, Lucifer finds out that his alternate personality, or his alternate person, is actually dead because Michael killed him. Then Michael comes down and he's like, I killed you. Lucifer's like, yeah, well, alternate dimension realms, all, all that jazz. And um, yeah, to be fair, I prefer I prefer over Michael. But then they sort of had a bit of a grapple, bit of a fight. And um, obviously, our Lucifer and alternate Michael. And was it me, or was that a bit less epic than the other time Lucifer and Michael fought each other? Because last time I checked, Lucifer and Michael fight equals the apocalypse. But this time it was just sort of like a bar brawl. It was just not as epic. Not as epic. Obviously, quite a disturbing scene when um, Dean says goodnight to Sam and he's walking down the hallway and he sees Jack like just stabbing himself. And I was like, oh my god, what the hell? It reminded me of that scene in one of the X Men films where um, the the blonde mutant with the wings is trying to like cut off his wings. And oh, it makes me cringe every time. Like I watched that when I was younger. It really freaked me out. So it just reminded me of that. I'm like, oh my god, I can't be dealing with shows that do this to people, okay? And then, oh, you could just see Dean care in that moment. He was like so shocked. And he didn't, he completely forgot that he was like Lucifer's son in that moment. Took the knife going, what the hell? And then Jack's starting to become self-aware going, what am I? And he's like, I'm gonna hurt someone. And then I could not tell if Jack was relieved or not when Dean said, if it comes down to it, I'll be the one to kill you. He's like, was he relieved that Dean cares so much that he'll kill him? Or was he like, oh my god, this guy's gonna kill me? We don't know, but that's how it ended. That was sort of like the cliffhanger of the episode. I thought it was quite a good ending, but then Dean just walks out, grabs his beer, grabs his knife, and then just, bye. That has been me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment down below what you thought of the season 13, episode two, Supernatural episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I do weekly videos, Mondays, Wednesdays, these Supernatural reviews. And um, don't forget to hit the like button if you liked 
this video and I will see you guys later.